Anthony Wittler and the Occasional Writing of Architectural Theory by Lucia Allais British-born architectural historian and theorist Anthony Wittler, 1941-2023, led a career that closely parallels the rise of architectural theory in the United States. From emergence in the 1970s and 1980s to discursive heights in the 1990s and disciplinary institutionalization in the 2000s. Wittler was a prolific essay writer, and several of his texts have become foundational to the field. In an interview from 2012, excerpted in this issue of Grey Room, Wittler reveals with unusual candor that his approach was occasional, even accidental. How many typologies are there? Three? Five? Let's go with three, he recalls debating while writing the now canonical The Third Typology. This 1977 editorial is known for articulating a distinction between modern and postmodern architecture with clarity and depth. Yet, in this 2012 interview, not only does Wittler call his three-part conceptual scheme totally wrong, but he describes putting it together in a haste, after a late-night party, to fit the publishing schedule of the journal Oppositions. In the reminder of the interview, Wittler narrates with charismatic flair the occasions for which many of his theoretical writings were produced. For each, he emphasizes that his interpretations are not necessary and that architectural theory has no fundamental truth aside from going against the normal. For Wittler, this aleatory method was a way to willfully open up questions, and he notes the influence of several authorities in interpretative destabilization, including Sigmund Freud, Walter Benjamin, Michel Foucault and Jacques Derrida. Still, Wittler's writings stand out for their historical rigor against the kind of facile transhistorical connections that are sometimes made in the name of interpretative freedom. For example, he was not alone in working on the architecture of the 18th century during this period, but, unlike others who focus only on the crisp neoclassical forms and functionalist building types of the Enlightenment as precedents for 20th century modernism, Wittler also wrote about the street as a scene of modernity, about character as a counter-concept to type, and about Claude Nicolas Ledoux not as a formalist, but as a physiocrat. As Wittler's legacy begins to be parsed, a more preliminary structural lesson can also be drawn from the occasional account of the discipline he insists on sketching out in this interview. What is, after all, the relation between occasion and critique? Easy resource to the Enlightenment would define critique as a discourse that rises above its occasion, becoming an autonomous philosophy. This is not what Wittler offers here. Gone is the self-serious image of architectural theory as a mode of reflection that filled the philosophical void after the failure of modern architecture to deliver on social ideals. Gone is the consensus that theory became prevalent only because of a lull in building. On the contrary, Wittler depicts demand for writing as driven in part by design. In this account, book projects are only temporary containers, abandoned once article-length pieces come out, and dissertations are products of retroactive positioning. Reading this interview through a media-theoretical lens, we can see Wittler describing architecture's moment of critical theory as defined by orality. What he narrates is not the content, but the event of interpretation. For instance, the pub joke and the lecture through which British modernism was declared not beautiful, but brutal. This interview lets us in on how late 20th century discursive circles reproduced architecture differently than their predecessors. Pre-war avant-garde architecture had embraced mechanical reproduction and mass publicity. Post-war modernism was diffused in part through a cybernetic network fever. Here, in Wittler's telling, theory was a media accompanying postmodern and deconstructivist architecture, and it was almost pure talk. This is not to diminish its importance. In fact, we can understand the historical event of theory in architecture by taking a cue from Wittler's argument on the history of abstraction. 
At the end of the interview, Wittler recapitulates his definition of architectural abstraction as something that, once you have learned to see it, you can't go back to looking at buildings any other way. Similarly, we could say Wittler hints that architectural theory has had momentum and lasting impact because it is akin to a rumor, something that, once you have heard it, you cannot unhear.